<laughs> turn the car on in the garage and my fucking porn <laughs> came through the Bluetooth. <laughs> Ask her. I heard uh, Dean Blundell smokes crack. Was actually the first to smoke it with Rob Ford. I heard too. <laughs> What's Dean got to do with it? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a Dean. <laughs> Dates rated R for you know restricted and for a little bit romantic. What do we got? What, Whoa, is, what that? is that in the background? What is that over there by the mic? Is he making the, wallets? What is he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> what? It looks like he's... Never mind. What's he doing? What? Is he dead? <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Let's start right out. Hey, what happened? There we go. There we go. I think we're live. We're ready. We're ready to go. False start. Now we're ready. We're here. It's live. We're here. Welcome to the show. My name is Dean. We are busy today uh, and brought to you by our friends over at Blue Microphones at Blue Microphones on Twitter, bluemic.com. Check them out today. The official microphone and uh, podcast gaming streaming sponsor and equipment sponsor of DeanBlundell.com. Also, thanks to our friends at Easy Auto Financial, easyautofinancial.ca. Uh, if you're looking for financing, can't find it, and it's expensive, they do it for free, no obligation. They'll also help you find a car. Go to easyautofinancial.ca today uh, and sign up. Zero obligation. Ed's Gitch. Ed's Fine Import sells them. Luxury underwear for men. You got the pouch in the front, super comfortable, and you can get a free pair with Gitch 3. That is your promo code. Gitch, and then the number 3 is your promo code. Ed's Fine Imports.com and uh, domination.com. Domination.com helps you produce content every day like we do, and it's super easy and it's free to try. Go to DMNTN.com today. Busy day, like I said off the top. We got all kinds of shit to get to. We've got a, a little game of Is This Racist to play today with our friend Buster Rhymes. We'll talk about someone signing me up for a newsletter for people with small wieners. Uh, and uh, we got in a Twitter spat today with our next guest. And this turned out actually really well. I'm really excited with how this whole thing happens. Not often do people get into Twitter fights and then go, we're doing a show together, but it's happening today. Uh, Lachlan Cross is here, James DeFiore, uh, and Stephen Kersner, a.k.a. You may have heard of him. Ed the Sock, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. BJ, Ed the Sock is here, but he's Stephen Kersner, and he's as Stephen Kersner today because we're not. We're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff, but yeah. I wanted to talk to the human in the puppet today because it's a human thing. But nice to see you, Steve. Sorry about the scrap we got in today. It's not your fault. It was my fault, <laughs> actually. So this is a very Canadian moment, but yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't properly read I didn't realize that there was an article attached to the tweet. Yeah. I saw only the uh, the, lo the the image of the press release and thought, oh, I was pulling my chain. And then I, when I actually read it, I realized I was the one who was at fault here and, and uh, apologized duly. Well, it's a shame because you and I could have dragged out a good Twitter scrap for like two, <laughs> three days. <laughs> I did that with, who the hell was it? The guy that started in Republic of Doyle, whose name escapes me right now. Uh, which is typical for somebody who starred in a long-running Canadian TV show. <laughs> Why would I remember his name? Um, <laughs> but uh, there was a Twitter fight. That, that was, was a show. Oh. Yeah, Republican Doyle. Remember that? Yeah. It was like, uh, yeah, it was a, one of those short-lived Canadian TV shows like The Border, where like ten years ago, when I was doing morning radio, we would make fun of it and go, "Guys, guess what? New episode of <laughs> The Republic of Doyle tonight." <laughs> <laughs> it, it ran for, I think, about three, four seasons. No, if you want to laugh about something, laugh about Heartland on CBC. They just announced it's coming back for like its like 15th season. <laughs> I don't think anyone knew it was around after the first season. And it's like the, uh, the, the rumor that exists uh, at CBC is that somewhere in a vault, they stored a funny episode of uh, Little Mosque on the Prairie. But they didn't want to put it out there because it would not fit with the rest of the series. <laughs> well, serious? that's what we do in Canada. We bury the 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 entertaining stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Fuck, we better hide that. Yeah. yeah. Um. And, and it's and it's interesting having you here today. I know because you you started like this. We we tried to get you on like about two months ago. I think James and you and James know each other, and that's it was how like a month ago well, during my yeah. campaign. Uh, what was the camp? The campaign was to start the new music station, right? It was like to yes. bring back much music. It was um, to start new music nation. Yeah. We needed some seed money yeah. so that we could uh, produce some content and then go to advertisers. Okay. So then that's how long you've been working on that for 
on and off for six years, really. Yeah. You know, the idea first occurred to me about six years ago. I was working at uh, on a show at CBC, and people kept coming up to me and saying how much they missed much music, how much they missed Ed the Sock, mm -hmm. and I, you know, realized that uh, nostalgia is a powerful thing, but you have to be gone a certain length of time before people really start to miss you. How long is and, that? Do you think six years? Uh, it's usually at least six years. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah, now I'm maybe longer. Six. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're on the cusp. Uh, is, is, that it, why, is that why Platinum, I that why don't Platinum fucking Blonde miss you? Still, is that why Platinum Blonde still tours? Because they waited their six years. Records now they just tour all the time. No, I think really they, uh, broke. Yeah, yeah, I think they tour oh, because what else kidding. are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Great they, they literally are standing in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay, so you had this idea to bring back much music. Now, how long has much music been gone for? You were a legendary VJ. If you haven't seen Steven Kerser's character, Ed the Sock, Ed's uh, late night house party, which led into the softcore porn that they used to show at like 12 o'clock. It was, tub. yeah, do you remember that? Ed's hot tub party. Um, I, I used to watch it all the time. I mean, I think we're relatively the same age, but I would watch it all the time because I think, you know, what amazed me about Ed the Shock, and, and this was back in when no one, had, I, mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, much music was fucking huge, right? Like it was massive. You, you'd walk into a teenager's house, invariably it was on. And you were the only inanimate object that was allowed to actually VJ uh, a show. Like well, you were it, that's, right? That's debatable. Okay. No, they had Shopalopolis <laughs> so, up, right? Didn't they? <laughs> there was there was a couple others that uh, maybe were semi-animate. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it uh, it remains to be seen. It depends on your tastes. Right, but you you were there for a long time. Legendary. You uh, you and your wife Lana, I believe, uh, brought this character to to TV. Uh, I don't know how Ed the Sock got its start, but. Uh, you were a Canadian institution. You really were. You're an icon. I mean, the, what you were able to create with a button, a cigar, a sock, and a couple of eyebrows, and of course, your sense of humor and how you wrote it, uh, was the kind of stuff that people would stop when they watch you interviewing like a superstar as a sock puppet. Like, you know what I mean? It was just... It was bizarre. It, it, it was a bizarre visual. As soon as you saw it, it was an totally. arresting visual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, I was at uh, City and Much for 14 years. Yeah which in Canadian TV life, like that's like job. 75 Half years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, a ha it's like, it's long. Nobody really gets those kinds of, uh, that kind of run. And I guess when, during the run, I didn't realize just how long it was or how lucky we were, because we we're so busy. Listen, we were producing a weekly uh, variety, like a weekly variety comedy show, Ed's Night Party, mm -hmm. uh, and producing about three or four VJ uh, shifts a week, which were always about three or four hours each, plus mm -hmm. producing fromage, which was mostly Leanna who did, did that one, um, and producing specials. And there was me and Leanna, uh, a woman named Star, and we had some other part-timers. But we were doing the work of many, many people. And so everything went by in a blur. And certainly there was no point in time when anybody thought, much music would be a what was that, you know, mm -hmm. to a generation. Everybody figured it would just, we would move on, but it would continue. Nobody ever thought something with that huge, a cultural footprint mm -hmm. could just up and disappear in like, like smoke. And it took a lot of really hard work to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was watching. Well, dude, I'm going to play you this clip. This is from an intro of, uh, of your night party show. And um, I was watching this. I'm like, does he write this stuff? How many people you like when I was researching for this interview, which I did, I researched to talk to you because I was excited to actually have you on the show. Um, I, I thought it must have taken a team. But you know, if it's just you, your wife and a couple of other people, this is fucking brilliant. Once Watch this. upon a time, there stood a beautiful castle, and in that castle was a magical fountain which made all of your dreams come true. How are things over there in the town? Hello? Peekaboo. I have a sock fetish. Well, I, what a coincidence. I have a large boob fetish. This is the best thing that ever happened in your life. For good times, just add water. Woo -hoo! Great to be here. Ed's Night Party, Fridays on City. Could you wow. fucking imagine having that show on today? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, you know, people talk about how we're so progressive on TV now and we've yeah. got Netflix and we've got all these shows and they're really pushing the boundaries. It's a load of bullshit. Television pushed the boundaries in the 70s as far as sitcoms go. Now yeah. they're all just pap. 
it's all just the, you you can see the the line coming down down the street and then there's the the canned laughter there's very few good sitcoms on now very few that push the envelope about things you can discuss mm -hmm. and uh dramas today i mean you can't do the kind of stuff I, I i'm a big fan of old tv i watch a lot of tv on dvds from the 70s for example and they were doing stuff that was much more honest about race relations and, and shit like that back then than they do now now they just pretend that they're doing something woke mm -hmm. but it's it's all very carefully stage managed mm -hmm. um could we do ed's night party now no um, would you, there's the other question, because one of the things that we got into today, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I came to your rescue a couple of times there. Uh, thank Steve. you. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. Um, <laughs> we got into it a couple of times today with people that were pissed off at you for doing that kind of content to begin with. Like some, one guy was coming after you. He said you were a misogynist back then. His name was Donald Donnie. Donnie was like, I was at a liberal art, art school while Steven or Ed was being misogynistic. And, and what people don't understand is that that was what you were paid to do it was a show you were paid to do, a character you were paid to do, probably paid pretty well to do for a long period of time. And for whatever reason, when people come after you or me or anybody else who's done something offside in the past or, you know, walked that sort of uh, humor line where today it's not something you can do. It's just not in the wheelhouse of things that are acceptable or appropriate. You're judged by it. However, the people who hired you to put that on wrote the show with you and did all that stuff, they get a free pass. And I don't blame them. Um, you know, you're you're the face, uh, or in my case, the name that is prominent. Uh, the flip side of that is that I got all the credit for their work, which also wasn't fair. Yeah, you uh, do look but, a little bit like the sock, though. I don't even have any hair, let alone green hair. I know. I'm just saying. Saying there's a there's a mild I think, if you, I think that if even, you hadn't hadn't just, known that in advance, I think perhaps you would have picked <laughs> Doctor Evil or something else. Um, yeah, that's a good one too, actually. Yeah, thank Dr. you. I'm Evil. glad to give it to you. Yeah, uh, you. They, uh, yeah, we couldn't do that now. Even then, we had challenges. I remember a very funny argument with a person who was the head of uh, CDTV programming, and I have to understand they never watched our show before it went to air. We would record in bunches. So we would record like nine uh, or 10 episodes over a two day weekend. You'd record at like a hot tub party with girls making out and flashing their boobs, and your managers wouldn't ever edit or check it prior Never. to it going no, there. That's awesome. That doesn't nope. sound like program they, directors or managers they, that I know of in the would business. Every now and again, say, we really should be looking at your show. And yeah. we give it to them. And about three weeks later, they'd say, just tell, tell us if you think there's anything that's beyond the line that we should have a look at. <laughs> and they left it up to us. And I did tell them when I thought there was something. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a thing about uh, a uh, a rant about fuck Home Depot. And I ran that past them. And they said, you can't say Home Depot. We said, OK. So we put three bleeps in there to get rid of its three syllables. They said, no, no, you can't do three syllables because then people will realize it's Home Depot. And then they said, because Ed happened to be wearing an orange shirt during that uh, piece. They said, you can't talk about Home Depot because you're wearing your orange shirt. And even if you don't mention that it's Home Depot, they're going to assume it's Home Depot because you're wearing the orange shirt. This is yeah. why I almost never went to them. In fact, this was the orange shirt right here. Uh, you're going to wear Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, there it is. Um, and uh, so they didn't check our show. And we started putting, we got permission to put naked breasts on the show, to put naked boobs on. Well, it was a lead-in show to softcore porn, right? This is my point. Yeah. This is my point. And I was told... Uh, don't put naked boobs on the show. And I said, why is it okay to run softcore porn immediately after us, but we can't have naked boobs on our show? And she said, if you don't know, I can't. Uh, then I can't explain it to you. And I said, so you mean you don't know? There is no reason. Uh, yeah. No. You, but but you never fil you never film the fluffer, right? So, we didn't need any fluffers there. <laughs> no, your show was the fluffer. Yeah, that's that that, that on, pretty its way much. Into, on its way into the pornography, right? Though, yeah. yeah. though, the exact opposite happened to the guys going into the hot tub. The thing I loved about the hot tub is the women were extremely confident uh, mm -hmm. of their 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 physicality, of their personalities. Um, and then we would get these guys writing, and I want to go in the hot tub with those babes. I'm gonna, and they would show up strutting, and then as soon as they got in the tub, they would just shrink. 
probably their penis too. You would just see all the alpha male disappear from them because yeah. the women would own them immediately, which was part of the reason I wanted the hot tub was to just take out, take the piss out of these these uh, performing arts males yeah. and show that when women take control of their own sexuality, they're way more powerful than us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did, did you I, show I, this to people? Yeah, you I did. figured that out when I was about 13. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people are not any smarter now than they were when you were 13. No, uh, I, I completely agree. I want to get to uh, Ed the Sox uh, handler. What do you call yourself, Stephen? Like, I, 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 and I'm not being rude. <laughs> handler. I, like, often say, the... I often say right hand man. <laughs> Ed the Sox right hand man. Oh, uh, nice. Stephen Kersner is our guest. How long did you, you worked at much for 14 years? When did you leave? And did you leave on your own volition or did you get fired? I left on my own volition. How I long was, ago? Uh, I left in 2009, I believe okay, 2008, so 2008, I left. 13 years ago. Well, 13 years ago. Um, I was, there's a video, if you Google who murdered much music, um, you'll see I'm, there, there's a video I made about what happened there and why I left. Mm -hmm. But the management changed and went from being really good and encouraging of ideas to being extremely derivative, rude, insulting, liars. Like, you know the kind of liars that lie to you even though they know you know they're lying? Yeah. And, and That's a special kind of liar. Yeah, they're, they're still lying. And they've got the Cheshire Cat, -cat grin because they're like, I'm going to lie to you. And I know you know I'm lying, but I'm still going to lie because what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there were some instances uh, that took place, and uh, like finally what? I just said I couldn't. What? Yeah, kind of probably kind of boring, but um, one time we uh, uh, had uh, we were doing a snow job, which would mean that I would go out to the small town we were going to take the bands to and do stories in advance. Yeah, and the stories always were two and a half minutes long. It was like an X and, Games with bands, right? Snow job. That was kind of yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd go out in advance, shoot these stories, edit them, and, and then they would roll them during the live weekend. Mm -hmm. And they were always two and a half minutes long. And then uh, I come back, and I, I remember I had been doing this for years now, two and a half minutes. I come back, and the, the piece of crap guy who was a supervising producer who had no talent whatsoever except how to suck up, mm -hmm. um, he said, they have to be a minute long. And I said, I wouldn't even have gone out there to do them for a minute long. You can't, comedy needs to breathe. We're introducing local characters. It's, it's shot to be two and a half minutes. It's two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm watching, now you hear another thing about it. I'm watching much music, which I almost never did, but I was clean in the basement. And Snow Job <laughs> was on. And there was, I, oh, here comes one of my stories. And I watch it and I didn't recognize it because they had cut it down to a minute from two and a half minutes without any thought of flow or continuity or storyline and so i uh tried to get the person on the phone who made the decision and he refused to take my calls and i warned him i'm on the air tonight so you should talk to me before then and he didn't so i went on the air and named him as the person responsible for ruining my content like just so you know i highly i highly uh advise against doing what steven did there <laughs> but <laughs> i fucking love the move yeah, mm, I, yeah, and uh, I said, you're not going to blame me for yep. the content being bad. Here's the guy to blame, because it was bad, and it was him. And I ran the regular content on my late night show, you know, the full stories, properly. Mm. And they were mad about that, but it was their own damn fault. And then uh, I was, we were doing a show, Leanne and I, called Ed the so uh, Smartass, the Ed the Sock Report. Yeah. And it was a documentary show, but humorous documentary show. We were told, first of all, well, this comes after. So we did one about uh, hip hop, you know, what's wrong with hip hop, looking at the sort of the biases against it and found that it was actually identical to hair metal, but just a little bit later and a little bit blacker. Um, and we got nominated for awards for that one. And it, the ratings were higher than anything else they had that month. And then we did one uh, called Promo Sexuals. So, and that was basically celebrities who will sell out any personal part of their life or jump onto any cause in some way to try to extend their life uh, on, you know, in the limelight. And we focused on Bono for one of the segments and pointed <laughs> out how he talks about governments and, and us giving taxes to, to uh, you know, other countries. And you two bailed out of uh, Ireland because they had to pay tax. They went someplace they didn't have to pay tax. And we talked about how his 
initiatives about anti-hunger and so on, always correlated with you two releasing an album, a tour, or some kind of product. Mm -hmm. Now we told, because of the sensitivity, I told the weasel in advance what we were doing and he responded an email. And I kept him informed all the way through about what was going on in the emails. And he kept saying, no problem, go ahead. Now the woman who was the, the person in charge, who was a, a piece of crap, was all, away on maternity leave. So he was in charge, so he approved it. The show airs the weekend she comes back and she's mad because she says, now Bono will never come here. Hmm. Now Bono was never gonna go there again anyways, because he only went to talk to Strombo and Strombo had gone to CBC. But they, uh, so this weasel says, I told him not to do it. He never told me that he was gonna do it. Okay, first of all, which one is it? But I said, no, no, it's all in the emails. No, you never told me, you snuck it in. You're, you know, you were conniving and you snuck it in and you fooled us. I said, no, it's all in the emails. And we had a meeting and I printed out the emails and I showed it to him. I put it in his face here and he looked this way. So I put it there and he looked that way. And the woman in charge is sitting right there and doesn't do anything to make just him in a boardroom. Is this in a professional boardroom where he's like trying to pretend to not see the paper you're trying to show him to? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's a great move. Yeah. And uh, then they said, well, okay, we don't want, we want to pretend that this never happened. Uh, you know, well, let's pretend it never happened. I said, okay. And they said, but you have to sh show every bit of footage to us as you're shooting it and editing it. So this doesn't happen again. I said, it didn't happen in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, you can't do that. And I, I'm, you're not going to interfere with my process this way. Cause I always would give them the show the day before it was supposed to air, knowing that if they wanted changes, there was no time to make them. Yeah. Um, but uh, sweet move. <laughs> it worked, but they they wanted they were on my back a lot yeah. about that, and then they told me that uh, nobody's allowed to mention anything that happened more than three months ago, because uh, our viewers are stupid and they can't remember anything more than three months ago. So don't. They told you either. that your bosses at Much Music told you, Stephen this, Kirshner, Ed the Sock, that woman you told don't me talk our, about anything from three months ago because Much Music viewers are too stupid to understand anything from three months ago. Is that correct? That's correct. And I okay. pointed out that the uh, show that we, the shows that we were doing, one of them, the, the smart ass show about uh, hip hop, we went back to tracing the roots of hip hop a few hundred years ago in Africa, an African tradition. And I said we went back a few hundred years and we trace things forward and we had higher ratings than anything any other program you produced that month and they said yeah our audience isn't interested in that and i said but we had high ratings yeah they're not interested in that yeah so there's no conversation happening here mm -hmm. and then she told me our viewers are stupid and just want shit so we're just going to give them shit That's and awesome. It was pretty clear with what they were doing. She canceled Snow Job. She canceled Tree Toss. She canceled everything that made much music, much music. Started hiring VJs who were spokesmodels instead of you, you know people you could relate to. And I just I couldn't stand this woman because she was so duplicitous. And uh, I quit. I was actually backstory is she was going to get fired, and I was going to come back after she was gone. But then the owner of Chum passed away, and the kids decided to sell. Yeah. And once they decided to sell. You can't have replace executives when a company is for sale because then the people think there's something wrong in the company and they won't want to pay the full price. So she got to ride out that time there and I never came back. I, they asked me to come back a couple of years, a few years later, and <clears throat> I was set to do that. And then they completely changed their format to comedy. And I thought, okay, well, Ed's perfect for comedy. And they said, no, it doesn't fit our format. Are you serious? <laughs> Just like the Comedy Network had a meeting with me years ago, years ago, the, not the same people who are there now, yeah. but there were some people years ago had a meeting with me about doing an Ed show for the Comedy Network, and they come back to me with an email saying, we don't think we can repurpose Ed for comedy. It's comedy. And I wrote back and said, I would respect you more it. if you, I would respect you more if you told me to fuck off. <laughs> um... So, I love that. So, so when did okay? So you leave six years. You've been kind of working on this new music station, bringing much music back and seeding it, and trying to build it as a business. And then this morning, I wake up, and it was. Listen, I wrote this piece about you today in support of you. I saw uh, that. And, Thank you. and this was this was the tweet. Bell Media and TikTok just crushed Ed the Sox' new business venture for shits and giggles, which they did. 
This was the tweet that I saw this morning. We're partnering with TikTok Canada to bring back much music. More info here. <laughs> uh, it happens July 7th. Um, now, the interesting part was I went to your Twitter feed to read your tweets after I saw the tweet mm -hmm. for much music and TikTok. And this was the first one I saw. Imitation is the snares for flattery. So thanks, Bell Media PR and Much Music for deciding to relaunch Much after I successfully promoted the real successor to Much, my new music station, after Bell told me they had no plans to use Much again three months ago. Suspicious? It's on. Yeah. So I read that after I read this Much Music press release, and I wrote the post you and I got in contact with each other because you thought I was shitting on you, but we've already dealt with that. Yeah. And I want to know what happened. Like, I want to know three months ago, what happened? Like, tell me about this, this tweet and this meeting and, and what has gone into what looks like, I'm not saying this is the case, what looks like you suggesting something to Bell and then Bell saying they're not interested and then turning around and saying, hurry up and put this shit on TikTok before Kersner finds out. Yeah. The, uh, the fact is, actually, I was talking to the previous management, previous president of Bell Media about uh, Randy, bringing, Lennox. Randy Lennox, right. about bringing uh, much music back, bringing back its library, finding a way to bring back its library and to create new stuff as an online channel. And he really, really liked it, he said. And he handed me off to his second in command, who I guess was swamped with work. We met and then didn't meet. And then the COVID hit. Um, and then I contacted Randy again. And he said, I'm really into this idea and just when uh i we were this was just like in december yep and then he leaves in january i didn't know he was leaving um so he leaves the guy who i was dealing with he was his second in command gets fired so that all goes out the window all the planning that we were discussing out the window and then uh i get uh, i was reached out to reach out to by the gentleman who's in charge of the much music brand at bell nice guy who uh, I remember he used to work in some capacity in much music PR, I believe, um, a long time ago. So we had a nice phone call. And he said that he thought that my idea of creating a, a channel, which is uh, updated, you know, with new VJs, with social media interactivity, and focusing on independent Live artists. programming, yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 that he said, that's a good idea. I think it'll succeed. And I said, how about we make it officially much music? And he said, well, we really don't have any uh, interest or any plans to be using that brand any time in the future. He did say that if we do, we'll probably try to aim for like Generation Z or younger. Um, and I said we were aiming primarily at the beginning at Generation X because they're the people with the affection for much music. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, they're not planning. Maybe somewhere down the road they're planning on using it. And maybe we would talk at that point in time if they were going to revive it. Uh, it was very, you know, very maybe. There was no commitment or anything there. Um, but they were very definitely not using it. And he encouraged me to go forward and, and had no con platform. They had no concrete plans to use it. They had which no was... anything. No okay. plans at all uh, right. to use it is what he told me. And when was that conversation? That conversation was in mid-February. Mid-February. And so fast forward, did you, did you know anything about this announcement before it came out this morning? No, not a no. word. No, not a thing. And, so fast uh, forward, they say the brand is dead. Uh, we don't, if, if we do something with it, we'll give you a call. You put six years of effort into this thing. This morning you wake up and you see this tweet. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, I saw somebody forwarded me the tweet, but yes, I saw that. I love their, their new logo. You know, there's a, there's a chain of religious bookstores in Toronto that has a logo that looks a lot like that. I mean, that's, that's really, yeah. the kids are going to go nuts for that logo. <laughs> uh, well, they're putting it on TikTok, which if uh, listen, if you're going to if you're going to like shove super fast content at a generation with ADHD, which is what much music was for. Right. It was in and out. and You get three minute videos, five minute songs, four minute bits like it was quick. It moved super fast. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is going to be successful for them. But what I'm interested in is do you have some kind of case? Like, do you have some kind um, of recourse to go in and go, hey, listen, guys, uh, in good faith, I've been chasing be this down and wanted to do this. Uh, I just think it looks ultra fucking greasy. That's just me. Am I nah, wrong? You know what? Lock? James, you know is what? it greasy? Hey, no this case. is not going to succeed for them. Sorry to, to disagree with you. They started something called Much Digital Studios a dozen years ago or so. Have you heard of it? 
no. No. Uh, because that was supposed to be the thing that put the much brand online. It yeah. failed miserably. Uh, this is going to fail because the people watching TikTok have no connection to what much music was. And if they do, it's something their parents used to listen to or used to watch, which makes it uncool. And they're doing, you know, TikTok has a limited amount of time that they can run things. And they're probably going to be kissing the ass of all the big name uh, celebrities, the big name talent. We're going, we're going specifically for independent, small label, new music, not mm -hmm. the stuff that's already oversubscribed. And our stuff is going to be an hour long. At, you know, each show uh, is going to be an hour long. And uh, they're going to use, they said they're going to use their influencers. It's all smacks of much music used to be, uh, used to say that it was uh, 40 year olds telling 30 year olds what 20 year olds want to watch. Um, this smacks of 60 year olds telling 40-year-olds uh, what 20-year-olds want to watch. Mm -hmm. I think they are so out of touch. They grab TikTok. Why? Because it's retail. They just pull things off the shelf. They don't really work at something. There's no inspiration there. They just think, oh, TikTok's big with the kids. Let's do something with the TikTok. Um, I think this is going to be uh, corporate and stiff. And I and we're not even doing the same thing. When people see the difference between what they're putting out there and what we're going to be putting out there, um, I think that we will only benefit by comparison. And even today, even before I started commenting about it, people were going online saying, this is sleazy, uh, Bell Media. This is really sleazy. And I put up a, you know, that tweet that you pointed out. And now um, all of Bell's uh, Twitter accounts have blocked the Ed the Sock account. <laughs> Isn't that great? Talk uh, about I, corporate I, pettiness. I love it. The one thing, I love it. That branding strategy of like of saying I'm gonna bring back much music via TikTok, which is like something that no one who watched much music when it first came out even understands or knows about is weird. So they're either going for generation X and Z or they're going for Generation Z and they're like, bringing it back, that thing you've never heard of. Also, I'm really shocked that uh, someone in the entertainment industry would steal someone's idea. That's just. <laughs> the, other, the other thing that's interesting, I think it's interesting to at least bounce this around. I mean, I wonder though, Stephen, if they did some kind of research or something, right? Like, do you think there was a panel or they threw some money at, at, at this. I mean, I'm not talking about the validity of the idea. I'm talking about the suits. They're, they're always looking for something to back up any kind of a move like this. Do you think there might have been an attempt at that? Oh, they don't move without a focus group, without yeah. research, without That's data what points. I'm, but but wasn't, your, wasn't your Kickstarter thing basically good for them, good data for them? They're like, yes. oh, wow, Ed the Saw can raise all this money. Think of what we might be able to do you know like yeah i think that they didn't think that anybody would be excited by that format anymore and mm -hmm. that's the ge generally the impression i got was these people didn't think that there was any life left in the format i have a friend who works there in a different department he said there's really not any love for the much music brand in this building and uh so they i think that they saw how much traction i gained because in before the uh, crowdfunder i did a lot of teasing and previews and mm -hmm. asking people their favorite much music stuff and what they love about much music and what they would like to see in a new channel and there was tons of responses hundreds of responses um and then we did the crowdfunding we got 118 percent of the money we were asking for plus on top of that there was somebody who who gave a good amount of money as an investor um, believed in it, like an investor that believed in what you were trying yeah. to do and trying to accomplish yeah and i didn't even approach him he approached me um and i think that they saw that and said screw this, we actually own much music, let's yeah. beat them to the punch and let's do it. And I think James is on point that I think that they used as some of their research, uh, just how much traction I got. And what's interesting yeah. is I'm reading your, your comments here. Corey Dixon commented that much music unfollowed me off Twitter because I tweeted about new music nation. <laughs> yeah. like, what, are they, what are they afraid always of? the cover up that gets them. <laughs> What are they afraid of? This is what I don't understand. I they, actually sent dude, an email to them. They're afraid of. They're, see, this is. Let me let me back everything up here because we're up. we're having a pretty heavy conversation about uh, corporate media in this country taking advantage of a human being, right? 
That's kind I don't of necessarily see that. I, well, I mean, I think let, we let would me, really let me explain. Are you talking because, about my phone bill? <laughs> no, I'm saying <laughs> so. Stephen Kersner, Ed the Sock, has gone out and sourced for six years concepts, business plans, how to do this, what what it would look like, raising money, selling little uh, you know cameo appearances for a few hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there for years. Guy's been at it for years, bringing this thing together. So he activates this on Twitter. He talks about it in his, in his podcast uh, on his network. And then uh, the organization that he talked to about it sees the traction that he gets, which is what we're talking about here. And I think James asked a great question. Did they look at that as data where they said, hold it, there's something there. We need to get in there before Stephen Kersner beats us to the punch, as James said. I was on the phone with Bell this morning for an hour and a half trying to get him to turn on my television. I got put through to eight, eight, eight different people. Three of them just hung up on me after 20, 25 minutes or just disconnected. Well, I D, find you that know what you need to do is you need to tell them that you're going to cancel your service. Then you will get them to talk to you. <laughs> I did. And then beat Bell, I tweeted about it once. Bell PR hit me up and I'm like, fuck, forget it. I don't want anything from you. I'll deal with it on my own. So so we've got, you know, this. And, and I was just thinking about it this morning because I thought, you know what? I don't want to bring my personal issue that I had this morning, which wasted two hours of my fucking time just to beat up a telco. And that's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is, is that these guys have put up Bell, Rogers, etc., put up walls around individuals like Stephen to not just prevent him from making money. They're doing it with people when it comes to their cell phones, their internet, uh, everything that they use when it comes to telecommunications. Did anybody in past and on management? top of it, he doesn't give. They don't give two fucks. They don't give two fucks about anybody as long as you keep paying them. Like as long as you keep paying them, that's all they. They don't care about anything wow. else. They don't care Find about Stephen. They don't care about Find the personality. They don't care about the way. brand. Find me a corporation that doesn't feel that way. Yeah. I, I'm curious. Do you know of any, like when you were there just before you quit, you 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 had uh, you had some issues with some of the management. Have they all been promoted? Um, the <laughs> he, He's not wrong. He's not wrong. The... Yeah. It's like I don't know. I don't know your vintage. It's like the last episode of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, when the only person who didn't get fired was the most incompetent member of the team. Uh, mm -hmm. They, the the weasel who I mentioned, who who pretended I didn't give him all the information, even though it was yeah. right there in emails. He only recently was let go in January. He yeah. was there all those years. She was let go three years ago. Uh, maybe four years ago. So she was there for many years. Her initials DD. Good people. No, Denise Donlin was amazing. No. Was she good? Okay, I'm just checking. Oh, no, no. I knew she was there, but and I heard <laughs> wonderful <laughs> things about Denise Donlin. That was all. I, no, I, no, I can't I say enough good things about the much music that people grew to love was, was because of Denise Donlin. No yeah. question. I her leadership. Um, it was after she left that the house fell apart. Um, and uh, so these people continued to work for years. Whereas good people like uh, my friend David Kynes, who was a VP of Much Music, he was let go not long after they took they officially took over. There was a lot of good people who worked there who were let go. Um, really talented, good people were let go, and these cockroaches survived the nuclear blast, and they were there for years. So Lachlan's point is is accurate. They stuck around, and I guess that they did get promoted. Mm. There are probably maybe a handful of people there that might have it out for you. I'm just, just there. Those that. people aren't there anymore. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're not yeah. there anymore. Okay. The, the I would have got the have I would have no got the net me. like the second that 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 bell blocked me on every single one of their accounts. I would have kind of got the hint. I would have been like, oh. I sent I sent an email yeah. to the guy I had the conversation with. Um, I haven't. Let me see if he's responded yet. That could be interesting. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, so where are you guys now? Here you are. Hey, buddy. Um, I said to him, look, I hope you guys aren't getting your panties in a twist over there. Um, this can this is very much a friendly, a very friendly rivalry. There's room for both of us. We're going to be doing different things. And as far as I'm concerned, you guys are doing me a favor. And I said, what are you concerned about? You've got the big money and the big guns. Yeah. Let's just let's just smooth this over. And years ago, when I did the Who Murdered Much Music uh, video, um, they 
they put it, I was on YouTube and Facebook and they bell got it pulled off of YouTube and closed my whole YouTube channel That's temporarily. So and then, yeah, but you know what in that case, what happened was it was an algorithm and some junior lawyer just stamping, you know, don't talk about it. And then I spoke to somebody who's an executive there who was there when I was there and we managed to uh, work it out in one phone call. It was, it was, you know, very civil and, and, and friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't Sorry. have a particular axe to grind against Bell. Uh, and I, I, I think that Rogers would have done this. Chorus probably would have done it. Any corporation would have done it. And Oh, yeah, for sure. The, do yeah. I, Chorus, Chorus would have done it, but they would have painted you as a murderer or a homophobe on the way out so that you couldn't come back and get it. Well, then maybe I'm lucky it was Bell. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, uh, and again, this is this is competitive waters. This is the world we live in. We've seen it. I, I've been in markets where rumor got out that one radio station was going to make a move and then another company flipped to that format, to, you know, to get in front of it. So there's always been an appetite for this, right. In, mm -hmm. in, in this, the, the corporate media world that we live in. And if, depending on what side you're on, you, you know, you, um, you have an appreciation for whatever's happening. Yeah. I think there's, if, there's, if it makes you feel right, any well, better, if, Stephen, if it makes you feel any better, the, the, I mean, <clears throat> they're probably going to make it worse, right? They're not. They're not going to make what envisioned. Probably. No, uh, they're I, not. I had a. I had. I, I don't know how to. If I should name names or not, or if I should just like let sleeping dogs lie. Okay. What's the name of your company, James? Well, it was called. <laughs> it was called Eat the Beat at the time, and it, the show concept was that MCs, rappers, would stand in front of a digital screen that would shoot off these graphics, and they had to freestyle based on the shit that they saw on the screen. So you couldn't yeah. fake your freestyles because that's what that was a big thing in hip hop. People were faking that's freestyles. Pretty cool, right? actually. Yeah, and so I I pitched it to um, you remember uh, Maestro Fresh West's old manager, uh, Farley Flex. That's right. I pitched it to him, um, and I like he how you like, did that. I said the name, not you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I pitched it actually to him and Jake Gold, uh, and. Um, and oh, they wow. they literally um, took it was on DVD. It's like two thousand and one or two thousand and two, and they took the DVD and they put it into their computer. And I watched Jake Gold look at me at the corner of his eyes. They dragged the file to his hard drive without telling me, just like right there in front of me. And I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm, I'm like, "Guys, I'm sharing it with you. I saw what you just did. Like, I don't care. You can have that copy. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I made it. Like, what, what by the way, that? not shocked. Jake Gold did that. By the way, I'm, oh, I'm dude. really no Jake, and I'm not shocked. <laughs> Dude, he's a anyway. Um, so so anyways, I don't know the guy. Yeah. So I pitch it to him, and that he he wants to rename it. Farley's all like, and I had a host in mind, Nigel from the Pocket Dwellers, and 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 Farley's like, I know Nigel, I know Nigel. You, you should let me be the host guy. I got the most, I got the most this and that and everything. And and I'm like, listen, like you know, we can talk about that, but do you want to do the show? And I, he wanted to rename it the Ultimate MC, and I had issues with that. And then it's just like we stopped talking. And then like three years later, Farley Flex put executive produces a show called the ultimate MC where MCs freestyle based on shit in front of them, but no he couldn't way. do, but he couldn't do the screen. So it was like carrot top hip hop where people would be like pulling shit out of trunks. And it was like, a feather. <laughs> oh. and it was just like, it was just oh, lack of spot, right? that so ruins the whole concept. Serious. Yeah. yeah. It happens all the time. Hey, never pitch, happened, never pitch without a lawyer. Never pitch without a lawyer. Where never. do you think the hmm. insult comic dog came from on Conan O'Brien? I uh, was I pitched to Conan O'Brien's talent coordinator, and we were and I sent tapes, and we were talking about having Ed be a character, yeah. and then suddenly, they said we're going in another direction. And a few weeks after that, their head writer, on his own, came up with this dog puppet that talks in a particular voice, <laughs> has a cigar, and insults people. And if you know anything about TV, you know that the head writer is involved with the talent coordinator because yeah. they're they're working things out. Um, and he claims to this day that he had no idea about Ed the Sock. But the thing is, I, you know, I had, I had Ed the Sock interviewing celebrities at the Much Music Video Awards. Three years later, the dog puppet is interviewing people at the MTV Awards. Everything yeah. that Ed the Sock did, the dog followed. Um, I should have sued at the time, but I thought, you know what? It's going to cost a fortune to, to sue, and there's no guaranteed outcome. Plus, the press will probably American press sides with the hometown team. Yeah. And I would probably get such over. bad press. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I said, you know what? I'm doing well here. Might have been worth it though. 
even the bad press might have been worth it. No, you know what? I'm, I was doing well in Canada. I, I'm proud of what we, you know, the team managed to accomplish here in this country. And uh, I didn't need to have that squashed by shitty arg- articles in Entertainment Weekly and shit so, like that. Here, here's Martin a question. stole an idea from me. Did they really? Yeah. I was doing a radio bit called Will It Flush. And uh, some one day somebody calls me and goes, I saw your bit on Much Music. <laughs> really? Seinfeld's mom like, called you. I thought that was a Letterman thing. Will it flush? No, that was no, a will I, it float I, thing. You I did it? that. I did that years and years and years ago. Yeah, I was. Uh, will it flush? And I had well, you know what happened while you know I was much music did, You know what much music didn't steal from my radio career? This w- bit we did for w- one feature called "Name That Stereotype." Name that racial <laughs> stereotype. We did it once and never saw it again. Yeah, we. Uh, we did things like that on the late night show. We actually um, made, you know, the beer hats, the, the yeah. b- baseball. With the, we actually made racially sensitive beer hats. So we had turbans and all the stuff with the beer on the side what? and stuff like that. Guys, um, wait, wait, wait. Steven kicked me off of his podcast, literally banned me from his podcast for life for so much when? less than that. But go ahead. When? Did I, you know, ban- like, I didn't know that. You banned yes. uh, De Fiore from coming on your podcast? Him, but- we, it was all serious. The tone was all serious. He's like, James, listen, um, I think your views are problematic about this and that. And well, I don't think you should come back on the show. And I was I'm like, I'm going to side right. with yeah, Steven here. Me too. I'm with Steven on that one. Yeah. Big time. I That's how no I know prisoner. I did the right thing. This says, is the longest you go. you've gone without insulting one of our guests. So oh, yeah. I, I have you. no idea what you're right, talking about. All right, fine. Steven, you look like my after photo in an anti smoking app. You guys happy? <laughs> Thank that's you, hilarious James. because looking at the way you look, if you're the before, uh, that ain't so good either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not. Yeah, you not look like we're not shit, showing dude. any improvement. Actually, the after photo looks better than the before picture. Yes, we got the gist of the joke. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, are you going to continue with the new music station? Are you going to keep oh, doing yeah. it, even though much music is coming back on July seventh to TikTok? Big deal. We're coming up. We're starting on July first. We're going to be do. We're going to kick their ass. We're going to clean their clock. Call it um, mush music. No, there was something that, that ran like that on much music. It was soft and romantic shit. Uh, um, yeah. I'm not af- I'm not afraid of them. If anything, yeah. this has benefited me today. I think but, you, you should know, be. Ed trending oh, a lot of thing. along and Oh, stuff. dude, you were trending first thing in the morning. And I didn't even know it until after you and I were yelling at each other. Um, but I, 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 that's what I think. I think that you've got this really cool brand. Right. I, I love the idea. I really do. I mean, we can take shots and go to whether it works or not. But I love the idea because what you're doing is you're giving people a place to go and play. Right. You're giving people a place to go and be content creators, uh, people to go and, and, and endear their personalities to people and deliver content, and music and uh, in long form situations. So, listen, I'm I'm 100 percent. And I said this on Twitter today on Team Ed the Sock now. So well, I appreciate if there's, that. I don't want anything from you. I want nothing from you. I don't want money. I don't want credit. I want nothing. What I want to do is help you jam this thing down the throats of corporate Canada. So if well, there's a way that we can help you, we're all in. Well, at least I'm, I'm all in. I can't speak for James or Locke, but well, I can say between the three of us, we've got I enough. might unmute you. Uh, we've got enough Twitter. anger built up inside us. Uh, <laughs> You've been that, kissing that Trudeau's ass way too much, and it didn't didn't make sense I haven't said so like Trudeau to. in ages. Oh, that's um, bullshit. You you kiss his ass all the time, and I'm no, like, I gotta mute true. this guy. I've, I've, I have done so little political stuff for months. Very little political, and certainly, mostly about uh, Ontario. Nothing really federally. Can um, I ask you a question good. about that's your good. political leanings? Because you went, like, full left for a couple of years. Well, I didn't go full left. I went left, and Still. now the left has gone even further than me. Yeah, and so now I'm watching you fight. Wing. Yeah, I'm watching you fight with like <laughs> super left wing people, like this guy, this guy Donnie that came after him today. He's like, Stephen used to make fun of women and show their breasts on TV, and I'm like, it's the fucking show. It was the show that he was doing for Christ's sake. But like, and I'm looking at and a liberal guy going after you, and I thought you had turned into the liberal sock uh, of Canada. Like I, I thought that that's kind of what I what I had come to know you as post much music, which is this. And, 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 dude, people love you, right? Like, I mean, you've got a massive following of political, politically motivated individuals who agree with 
your leanings with, you know, your support of Trudeau, your support of the Liberal Party. I fucking hate politics and I hate all politicians. I happen to think Justin Trudeau is too stupid to even fucking pour cereal uh, in a bowl in the morning. And I also think Aaron O'Toole is the biggest piece of shit on the planet. So like when I watch you do your thing, I can't help but wonder if maybe you're friends with Trudeau or you've got friends in the Liberal Party. And I'm just asking, I'm not I'm not suggesting that you're ultra woke and you've got an issue, but the kind of personality that you were on much for years to go that far left was a shock for a lot of people, right? Well, the thing is, Ed was always left on much music. It just did, it didn't seem it because the context was mostly in music, mm -hmm. um, though we did editorials every week on Ed's Big Wham Bam, the primetime show, and they were always... No, I remember those. They were center left, um, but very much, I'm very much centered left. Um, I can't stand the, what calls itself the left anymore because they're sanctimonious assholes and they they go looking with a massive fucking magnifying glass to find any crumb of something in what you've said ever, ever, yeah. ever, that can show that they are great defenders of wokeness because they have exposed you and they're full of shit. That's and what you did to me. That's I literally you, what you did to me. No, I didn't <laughs> like your opinion. Uh, you, you violated our, our opinion uh, width on a particular yeah. topic. What is that? How does someone violate the opinion width on a Fox. topic? <laughs> James, what did you do? Stop what did, what did you say? With things no. that are true, now James. I need, now I need to know what, what, what yeah. did you say, James? I don't remember. Probably do you remember what he said, Stephen? Yeah, but I'm not going to get into old news oh, now. Oh, I remember. If, I didn't want to call that guy. Remember the uh, Jessica Yaniv wax my balls person? It was my contention that it was that that person was faking the trans identity, so I would refer to him as Jonathan Yaniv instead of Jessica Yaniv. I think that was it. And you were like, yeah, "Oh yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's the guy, the Jonathan Yaniv, sorry, female trans person who uh, has been running around B BC. I think a lot. We told you about this person yeah. is, running around BC, it, begging, begging to have his balls waxed, begging women of color to wax his balls. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's she right, whole, begging women of color to wax her didn't, balls. She didn't beg. She demanded. Ended. Yeah. Begging well, would have been a little bit more supplication. Well, he's got you in your corner, Stephen. So uh, well, I just it. I'm very sensitive about transgender issues because I know somebody who was transgendered and was beaten to death as yeah. a result of it. So yeah. I uh I'm very sensitive about how transgender people are spoken about. Um I'm not hey, sure. listen, okay. I in the past I'm sorry about I'm sorry about your friend, but I mean I don't really know what that has to do with what I said, but go ahead. Why are we litigating something that's three years old? I think because it's just um, because it's making you uncomfortable. Me. You can you can blame <laughs> no, me, Stephen. I just how is that podcast silly. going? How is that podcast going? Anyways, I don't remember what show. It was. When you were on, it, yeah. I stopped that one because oh, actually no I, I got oh. I got so sick of politics yeah. that the podcasts we do on Fu Network now are maybe some social causes or social issues, current events, mm -hmm. um, and comedy. Um, I got, we had so many political shows. We had like nine shows a week going on. Yeah. But did you I, feel I, like, like Kersner, let me ask you something. Did you feel like, cause I know I did for, as a content provider producer, mm -hmm. I felt like from 2016 to 2020, I felt like I had to, because of Trump and because of how fucking shitty people were, I felt like I had to side with the left the majority of the time because it was good business to do that too right it, it just is like you you yeah siding with the left whether you agree with them or not you don't have to say how far james you're siding with the left james is losing his mind james right is now. losing his mind <laughs> but it is good business to do I that that's that why james can... owns blackballmedia.ca because he doesn't give a fuck about doing well, what else that. happened in 2020 at the dean blundell network well james and this is joined the dean blundell network i wouldn't so, join your network if you're all like listen it's problematic what you said about jonathan but you know, no, no because but, i but think those things dean are funny has a right point Dean has yeah. a point. And I know. It's actually, I seep it. into politics it. now. It's yeah. the basis of virtue signaling. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest response you get. And I don't know if the algorithms or whatever the hell it is is set up this way. But if you want to talk about anything that might trigger uh, the 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 left, you're not going anywhere. It's not no. going anywhere. You want to you want to uh, put something out there that'll trigger right wing politics and and your virtue signaling. Boom! All of a sudden. You're off and running. So this is this is when you say it's good business. I find that ironic because I know a lot of people in our industry that that craft their posts for exactly that. 
Yeah. And I block those people too. Oh, totally. No. I, mean, I did too. But what, what I'm, what I was saying was, is Steven is like, I think some of us, I could be wrong and I don't want to put you in that category. I can say that about me. I had to look at myself when James started, when we started to have people that were super right wing on the show <laughs> and I had to reevaluate how left wing I was. I'm like, Holy fuck. I, like, You're not left right. wing Dean. I, but I was acting like that. I was acting scared of the right, scared of the left. Yeah. And so you virtue signal right through your content, through your posts. I don't want to say you were doing that, Stephen, but I want to say I think a lot of us got caught up in it from a content well, you know perspective. What? The thing but is but then the perspective of like James bringing in right wing guests doesn't mean that James is right wing. And all of, no, sudden, of all of a sudden the landscape opens up and you're like, oh, you can talk to literally anyone and it's fine. It used yeah. to be considered a scoop. It was considered like the worldwide scoop of a century when that reporter landed the interview with Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's like you can't fucking say hi to Ann Coulter or else they'll shut your website down or something. Funniest you can't, you can't interview. We asked to have Jordan Peterson on the show. Yeah. And I've, I've emailed him. He's emailed me back. He's looking into it. He's trying to find some time. But oh, that sounds like bullshit. No, no, I'm serious. I would okay. love to have him on. No, I, I knew you would him. like to have him on, but him looking for for time? Maybe. I bet maybe. he does. Steven, I bet he comes on. And then James I and I are talking about uh, an interview with someone, and I don't want to say who it's with yeah. Yeah. because we're going to get – but I'm serious. Like, this is one of the people, one of the interviews that, that you go, oh, my God, I don't think we should do that. I like, And we'll interview anybody, right? But I wouldn't have thought about that interview a year ago. I would have said, no, forget it. Not interested in talking oh, to that, that person. That, you can't fucking tease us like that. No, no, we'll tease you. Give we'll us a you hit. Off air, off air, off air. Yeah, no, sometimes it's better if you don't mention the name if you're still trying to work on whether you're going to get them on or not. Um, I'll type it into the, listen, I'll type it into the chat so you guys can see it. Okay. okay. Don't right. say anything. Don't say anything. Um, we'll do it um, I'm not say anything. Let, let me answer. Uh, oh, boy. Let me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll say, this. I'll say this. He has a lot of time on his hands. Yeah. And that's listen here, Stephen. You're the listen here, Stephen. You're the fucking leak if this gets out. All right. Yep. <laughs> no, all right. Stephen, Stephen, this is the start of our friendship. Don't fuck this up. Now, yeah. Um, just to answer your question, I wasn't so much. It, what really offended, got motivated me in the last election was the conservatives were saying things which were absolutely not true, and I hate <laughs> shit. That's absolutely Politician. not true. Um, there's there's spin. I respect spin, but things that are factually well, untrue. That explains your love for Trudeau. Then I don't yeah, like he it. Tells the truth <laughs> all that the guy time. spins well, he, on yeah. a top. <laughs> Politicians Jesus spin. Fucking Christ! Yeah, he plays a truth teller on TV. But there's yeah. just but there's just a, a line where I won't cross, which is when you're telling shit that just isn't true, or you're trying to manipulate things that aren't true. And I found Sheer was doing a lot of that, and it yeah. really pissed me off. That was, you know, behind my zeal at that time. Um, so it was a personality character thing, not necessarily a political thing. You just well, and, then, and I don't have any connection to the Liberal Party. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, when I tried to get an interview with Justin Trudeau for our uh, podcast network, uh, they kept putting me off, putting me off, putting me off, and uh, then. Uh, stopped returning emails and I sent to somebody else and they stopped. So no, they don't consider me any particular uh, asset uh, in that way. Or I think they think I might've been an asset, but best kept at arm's length. And mm -hmm. do I know Justin Trudeau? No is a big way to put it. I've met him uh, three times over 20 years and none of them, none of the encounters lasted more than about two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and they were always about something, shooting something or, or something like that. So I don't have any, there's no friendship there. Um, it, it's just, I happen to align. You get, trolled, you get trolled a lot for that, right? Like uh, that's yeah, one of I the see things that, 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 yeah, yeah. That, yeah uh, and I don't, didn't I don't you, Steve, wasn't there a rumor that you had a good friend in their like strategy yeah. room or something? Yeah. I remember the idiot who started it <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't you. Um, if somebody thinks I'm <laughs> taking a shot at in case somebody thought I was James, taking a shot at you, idiot. yeah, in case someone thought I was hey, taking a shot so at you, there's this idiot. Don't worry, James, I don't mean you. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're a, di a whole different kind. Um, you're I have a different kind. I have, Thank you. uh, no we can cut friends. right there. Cut I, shows over. Shows yeah, you know what? <laughs> finally got our sound bite. <laughs> I have no friends in the strategy uh, room yeah. of the, the, the Liberal Party. I have no affiliation whatsoever. It was I'm just not a, a member of the party. I'd have never given them money. 
but you tr- you're you're triggered. You were triggered like everybody else was triggered over the past four. That's what I'm understanding. Oh like, well, yes, that, there was. Yeah. It, it seemed like it seemed like sense. the apocalypse. Yeah, it seemed That's like how it was presented. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, as somebody who can't stand absolute bullshit, I couldn't stand Trump and the fact that people were standing up and not caring that he was lying. Like, I just think that it matters to not completely lie all the time. Yeah. Maybe occasionally you're going to lie here or there. You're going to misrepresent something. Who is, right, the guy, who is the guy that we had on from Brazil? Glenn, 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 Glenn Greenwald. I have. Ne- if oh, you, you get a chance, on. Stephen, you need to go back and listen to our uh, Greenwald interview. Okay. And, and it's I don't I know what at what point, but it's worth listening to the whole thing. I have never heard a better breakdown on what Trump represented than him, and he okay. did it so and eloquently. How he was portrayed as a liar, yes. even though he is a liar, even though he is what we know he is. There's more at stake and more at play here, right? Like everybody got so angry about yeah. being on one side or the other. The Greenwald interview, which we did with him, thanks to James. Uh, really helped kind of shed some light in like literally 30 minutes or less yeah. on on the political system and who was who was being uh, corralled as, you know, reputationally what, what we were told they all were, right? Like Am that's, I wrong, that's kind of where it is. That, no, I don't think it is. Not, it was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, oh, my God, I've never heard out. anybody explain I it so that, well. I thought he was a uh, fairly right-wing Trump supporter, I, so... No. Um, no, I don't know, I'm only peripherally familiar with him. I will check that show out. It sounds very a, interesting. There's a trend in media right now, um, especially among independent journalists in the states, where if they criticize, if they're from the center or the center left or something, and they criticize the left, they'll find themselves with a whole bunch of far right mega type fans. And so then the left that they're criticizing will say, "See, he's with mega people," and that's why Glenn Greenwald gets lumped in with. Yeah, I see. I see, it's, yeah. it, it's interesting, and I, I've actually commented uh, a number of times in the last couple of months about where we're at politically, especially with COVID and and people's opinions one way or the other about um, you know masks and rules and and all of this stuff. And and I said mm-hmm. I hope we get to a point, and I don't think we're there yet, uh, but I said I hope we get to a point where you can have an opinion about a negative opinion about what's happened like i i i have a real problem with the border thing and putting people into hotels and charging a great deal but i'm not i'm not joining chris sky for a rally on the weekend right <laughs> but if you say anything on your radio show or on a podcast about yeah. oh, i don't necessarily agree with the 900 dollars or the 1200 dollars all of a sudden you're selling hot dogs at a chris sky event right like <laughs> you can't you can't you can't have a conversation you can't you can't manipulate that middle anymore. No, you're, you're, you're throwing right. it to these two there's, sort of sides, right? There's no nuance. There's no, no nuance. When I, um, I I threw you into you know the Trudeau camp. That's why I muted you, Stephen. <laughs> no, I criticized Trudeau. Listen, some of our podcasts during the last election were brutal on Trudeau. The first podcast we did was Trudeau did it to himself. That the, the problems he was having were his own fault. Kind of explains um, why the phone calls and the emails back oh, yeah. from Trudeau stopped. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, Peter, I only have to wear a helmet to the mall. Yeah. The bus so comes nice. up, <laughs> picks me up on Saturdays. Yeah. At and nine. Goes to the mall. All right. We yeah, we, we go to we go to Dumpty's and I have uh scramble, a scrambler, and then I'm off to the mall. And you have a, a great, an eye patch like dirty rotten scoundrels, so you don't, or put a, a cork on the end of your fork so you don't poke your eye. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Where's go my ahead. diapers? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One of the funniest movies oh, yeah. of all time. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, listen, Stephen, I, I, I got to tell you, we're supporters of you, um, supporters of your story. Uh, not that it matters. I'm really glad that you took the hour to spend some time with us today to kind of explain what happened to you. Um, and we'd love to have you back uh, as, as this continues to unfold and you continue to try and make life work for you and a whole group of people that you've been working very hard for. Um, I hope that that gets represented. And if you're watching this, and there's a lot of people watching this right now, is there a way that they can donate? Are you still taking money for your for your project or no? No, not really. I mean, they they still at Indiegogo. They still take. Uh, I just got I got 500 bucks today from somebody who wants me to pimp their business, um, which was one of the options 
awesome. that we gave away. 500 bucks is so cheap to be doing this kind of thing. It's like insulting, but I gave it away so we could raise money. Um, the Indiegogo is still there. It's I think indie IGG dot M E slash new music nation or something like that or NMN. Um, but go we'll to post, new music. We'll post it on your Twitter. We'll tell people yeah, to go okay. post go it. Go on to newmusicnation.ca. Yeah, yeah. There's videos there now. It's a placeholder. It's a really shitty website. We're in the process of building a really good one. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a, a launch video there, and there's uh, five videos uh, with bios of our new VJs, which will give you a sense of the flavor of what we're doing. And uh, we are still we're going forward as far. We're going to launch July 1st. Mm -hmm. They good. can go July 7th. I really think we're not going to be reaching the same people. And I think they're not going to be reaching many people at all because, uh, listen, when you're in the rock and roll space, I prefer to be the underdog against the corporate overlord mm -hmm. than be the corporate mm -hmm. the corporate person. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are going to support the underdog, right? Like, absolutely. Dude, we'll support you, and I, and I hope everybody else supports Stephen Kersner and his project uh, to bring the new music station to fruition. If you want to check it out, please do so. We'll put that stuff uh, in the link to the podcast as well. But Stephen uh, or Ed, great to see you. Thanks for doing this. Little Thanks concern, for having me. Little let concerned me about you, the, the, monkey, want, the monkey yeah. or the puppet in the back behind your right shoulder, maybe left shoulder. Which one? Like, what does it look like? On the couch, it looks like uh, it looks like um, oh, it looks like a, a creepy, a creepy ventriloquist doll is what it. Oh, looks that like. is a, that is. I I got that from my mother as a present uh, when I was about eleven, and that I still explains have, a lot. I think I never did. I never did any ventriloquism shows, and I never did watch Anthony Hopkins in Magic. No, you um, should. Creepy but, shit. Uh, I think the fact that you kept it at all. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah because uh, I kept it because my mother got it for me. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, listen, dude, thanks for doing this. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. James, water know. under the bridge. Yes. Let me know if you want to bring back Will It Flush. Oh, okay. wait a second. <laughs> I, I wanted to uh, I'll ask next time about J.K. Rowling. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Jesus. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you, buddy. There you go. Steven Kirshner, otherwise known as Ed the Sock. Okay, let nice. me ask you a question. When, when fences get mended, that's great. That's let great. Me ask I mended you a that fence myself. Would you, because you're a bigger, better yeah. person, and you're growing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Would you just, you, before before you get to it, you're, you're not only right, you're 100% right. So we exchange a couple of salvos, right? I wrote a nice story about him. He shits on me. I go, would you like to do this here? He goes, you're the one who picked the fight, Dini. I go again, no, Ed, read the piece. I said, I can tell you're triggered, buddy. You okay? He goes, like the, what he deleted was, yeah, I'm okay. I go, well, I'm sorry you were fucked over, bro. Legit. Now you can go back to insulting me for agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, this is what Ed did. And, and, and if you don't like the person, that's fine. But look at what he did at the bottom, Dean. I apologize. Do you know how fucking yeah. easy that is? I like that. Instead like of continuing the argument, yeah. instead of fucking going after the guy, he had a terrible day. That guy had it because behind the sock, whether you care about he's the guy or not, to make it, he's trying he's, to make the best out of it. Grinding. If you know what it's like to grind like that for years and then have someone steal your shit from out under you, that's really awful. Like it's an awful. But story. he's right though. I think he's right to go. All right, this is something that may be um, a positive, and how can I spin this positively? Well, he's got no other choice, dude. Yeah, and, keep grinding. But, he, right? but you know what? He does have a choice. He could be angry. He could be suing. He could be doing all sorts of things. He's chosen the path that he's on, and I think it's the right path, and I think he'll be successful. You know what's interesting? Because if he focuses some positive energy at it, that'll come back at him as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here's the other thing, too. I, I wanted to know whether or not you guys could have interviewed the sock. See, I can't. I, I wouldn't have been able to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would have been able to interview the sock. He you asked me. You just play straight, the, man. You just play straight, in a, man. In a, in a DM, he's like, he's like, do you want to interview me or the sock? And I had to look at the tweet and go, I don't know if I understand what he just said. <laughs> this is so weird. Interview you. You are the sock. Like, how do I <laughs> Can, Do we have to separate the two? But I think he does, right? It's like the Trailer Park Boys. Like, that is his moneymaker. He makes money off of his But for yeah. this interview, for this interview, it made more sense Park Park Boys. Boys. I, I don't know if I'd be able to interview the Trailer Park Boys. Having said that, I, I had Diener from FUBAR on all the time. But he has become Diener from FUBAR. Yeah. He, he is that guy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy for us because we just talk to him like he's Diener and he actually is Diener. Um, why, why do you keep wiping your screen? Because it's in here and it keeps house. on fogging up. 
Are you? Is it that? It's like that 82 hot degrees. In there? My, it's 82 degrees in this room that I'm in right now. Yeah, gentlemen. Oh wow, mm. gentlemen. Um, still trying to get to the bottom of who signed me up for <laughs> DinkyOne.com. That's got to be Lachlan. Come on. That's okay. Talk hold right on. There. No, 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 no. That's cock talk. Uh, I seriously, I swear to God, it was you don't not believe me. in God. You don't I believe okay. God. I swear on the puppy. Okay, listen. I Dude, did not so, sign you up for this, and I let, thought Grant did, and Grant swears he didn't either. I'm getting to the. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. We'll help each other today a little bit. I Grant don't think Grant's being a hundred percent honest <laughs> with you, because I went back and looked because because Grant said something today. So, so just so you know, I got an email like two days ago. It's like congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> You've been signed up for a daily uh, newsletter from dinkyone.com. <laughs> it's a it's a dating website for guys with little hammers, right? So do you have this, to pick your like, own yeah. handle. Do you pick yeah. your own handle? Like teeny weeny uh, deeny kind of thing? Or like do you media and the internet are putting are putting ever increasing pressure on men. Do we need some uh, classical music for this? I feel I like think we, we need do. some yeah. like thrash metal. I do. I, I think we need music. some classical music for this. I need to say boy. hi to Crystal. Crystal just joined us. So hi, hi Crystal. Crystal. Thank you for watching. So I get this today. Media and the internet are putting ever increasing pressure on men to measure up to certain standards. <laughs> be it body image or penis size. <laughs> Body image is generally within your control, but penis size is not unless you undergo surgery. So after the, I oh. read that first paragraph, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, am I, what am I on now? <laughs> In addition, the internet is packed with false claims and products to increase penis size. That much is true. Many young men now think that you do need a 12-inch penis to satisfy your partner. This simply is not the case. And our dating, here, dating site is here to normalize the situation. Our site's operated by DM, I don't know, which organizes, I don't know, some other shit. Who wants a smaller penis, they ask? <laughs> I don't need to read the answer because the real answer is no one. Nobody wants a smaller wiener. I've that never met anybody you shouldn't take that has your come profile up to me seriously, and, Dean. and said, guys, <laughs> I got to get rid of half of the size of this penis. It's just too big. They say straight pe females preferring smaller penises. There are women who just prefer a smaller penis. Well, I've never met one of them. <laughs> so I don't know where they got the focus groups for this, but that's a lie. Not Portugal. Gay and bisexual men preferring a smaller penis. Some, I get that part. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not Portugal. Then I went to the Dinky because they sent me this today. It's like, hey, read what our members are saying about being on Dinky. Look at One. their logo. <laughs> Look at the logo. <laughs> that the is balls so are funny. huge and a tiny dick. Oh. Uh, user uh. quote: Someone says, "When you're a smaller man, dating is very complicated." No, dating's fine. It's the sex that's hard. A lot of my mates found their partners in France via work. Imagine a situation when one of those relationships fails. She's likely to mention size to her friends. And then gossip spreads. Everyone in your office is asking you, can you help me a little bit? Do you get a small peat and pencil I can borrow? Everyone knows you become paranoid. And then you're paranoid. And therefore, it's better to date online strangers. T, age 36. He says, websites dedicated such as Dinky One are awesome. Oh, my God. Okay, now why do you think that Grant may have done this? I think because I did some research. I looked into his Twitter feed, and him and another guy he worked with uh, talked about signing guys up for this. So if there's I, anyone as soon in this as group, I, if there's anyone in this group, and, and I don't know Grant that well. I'm texting him. I would say that he... Oh, or this is, this is one got of your Grant friends Johnson written all over it. Sign me up for dinky1.com. <laughs> is it real? Yes, it's real. It's, it's real. Not, it's not just a joke. No. Okay, no. so hold on. Here's here's what I do know and I had forgotten this part when 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 Dean dropped this on us yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like I need to talk to Grant about this. What did I say? The first thing that popped in my mind was Grant probably did this because he's said, done this, this to other Scott, people. Grant Johnson, my co-host on the locker room, 
<laughs> this has got him written all over it. Yeah. And anyway, so I, what I did was I brought it up on the show today and, or before we went on air and Grant was like, I didn't, I swear. And I'm like, I don't think Dean believes, I think Dean thinks you did this. So we called <laughs> Dean did. and we ran it on the air <laughs> and, uh, we ran the phone call on the air this morning. It was very, very entertaining. Um, but Grant uh, brought up something that happened to him. So before he started doing this to his friends, he got signed up by one of his buddies and a woman who was on the site contacted him through, through the radio station. So he, he got a note from yeah. the site saying, yeah. Hey, there's a lot of fake people on this. Uh, but I saw your profile on Dinky Ones, and I'm wondering if it was you. <laughs> so he was on it, and he found out it, about it from some woman who was on there, looking as for you someone with a small looking wiener. for somebody with with for with love for love, yeah, for a small wiener, yeah. So I don't know, Dean. You might start getting a lot of uh, your it's dating him. might start getting better. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Someone may have signed me up for it. I'm not using it. <laughs> like, I'm not going to go. The yeah, thing is, you're on there now. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> if you go to Dinky Ones right now, download yeah. the app, James. Do it no. on your phone. <laughs> yeah, do it, James. Download the app, Dinky One, and show your wife. Yeah. And just <laughs> check out Dean Blundell. Just this do is, a search. Uh, I went looking for other sites. There's, there's a site, like, for really specific dating sites for people. Gutsy. Is a site for people who have digestive health problems or Crohn's disease. <laughs> so people just with the shits, like I guess. What are they gonna do? Cheers? Like eat cheese? Uh, <laughs> oh, share there's another one. Yeah. This one's like it was really upsetting to see so many people struggle to cope with the stresses of dating to find someone who understands that I can't stop shitting myself. <laughs> and there's another one called Lemonade. Uh it's for people with chronic health conditions. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Quote, maybe it's all lemonade ends up being a fire starter that pushes you out of your comfort zone. That's nice, right? Some people that <laughs> traditionally wouldn't leave the house. And then this one made me kind of, I, I, I'd love to know what this is. It's called Glimmer. It's another dating app for people with physical and cognitive disabilities. Now, I looked, I know what physical disabilities are. But I looked what, up what are cognitive, yeah, what are cognitive dis disabilities. It just it, it is technically means you're not very bright <laughs> for for one reason or another, right? Like maybe All it's right. something that maybe there was problems in birthing. I shouldn't be laughing. <clears throat> maybe you, you just came from bad stock. <laughs> maybe dad and mom did a little too much peyote on the night of the conception. There's lots of different reasons why you may uh, or may not have cognitive abilities, but it's a website. <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but for people who aren't very bright so that they can all hook up and not it's, feel stupid next to another person. Cognitive it's called, is just called, such a, that's such a big pen. It's called marriage. It it's called glimmer. Yeah. <laughs> glimmer of no anybody, anybody seeing the irony in the name? Yeah. I also find it rather disturbing that uh, I didn't know what cognitive meant, so I probably should sign up for the fucking hey, site. Sign right up, Lachlan. <laughs> Lachlan Cross. Now, now on Glimmer, go, looking for love. Uh, find other people oh my just God. Like you. And and Peter thought I'd find love on the bus ride to the mall on Saturday. You could have <laughs> if you tried. In my blue helmet. Ah. Oh. Anyway, anyway. I, I think it's Grant. It's got to be Grant that signed me up. It's for it. Grant. He's doing it. It, it. it. He does these types of things, and I wouldn't put it past him. Although he is <laughs> denying it, but he got a great deal out of pleasure out of the fact that <laughs> that you got signed up for this today. I could. You, can you just see the ad for the for the cognitive uh, one? It's like, yeah. does does your bus beep when you get off? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Are your SAT scores right around your age? Yeah. <laughs> Did you Is drop Forrest out Gump of junior high? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm texting Grant. Brett. Grant, he still thinks you signed him up. <laughs> Did you huff a lot of paint in your teenage years and have a hard time functioning? 
were glimmers you, for you. Were you an honor student at Yak High? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, anyway, I just uh, the logo is you're right. The logo is unbelievable. Dinkyone.com, small penis dating site. Smart. Anyway, that's it for us. Hmm. I, think, I don't think we have time to get to the Buster Rhymes story. Maybe save it for tomorrow. Save yeah. that. Yeah. We'll see if he's guilty. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'll just put the headline up on the screen and you can tell me. Do you it's, think it's a little game? It's a little game. Well, let's finish. Let's finish this 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 podcast with a little game called Is It Racist? Yes. Okay. What's the name of the publication? New York, New York Post. Post. Yes. Are you kidding? The it's the yes. Post. <laughs> the Post did this. I saw this this uh, headline today, and I and I I was shook. Like I don't get shook much, but this shook me. Man fatally shot outside Chelsea's Dream Hotel. Busta Rhymes later seen nearby. <laughs> like that's some Babylon B amazing. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> that Look, is the most with... racist headline I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like he's, ever. He's dating the girl from Eurythmics. Look. <laughs> Sinead. Look at that fucking that's headline. Sinead. It's like a, all these white people. Look at that. It's a white people, nice area. It's a white person got shot. Buster Rhymes was seen in the area. That's with his Halloween crazy. shirt. Look at his Halloween <laughs> shirt. Awful. That is awful. I can't. I believe can't believe that. they accompanied it, but with a picture. Can he? He can sue for that. He can I sue. Don't I don't know who can sue anymore. I thought Stephen Kersner could have sued much music's ass off this morning. No, I, I don't think he can. I don't think he can he, anymore. You know. Anyway. All right, boys. All right. So yeah, that was racist. Yes. I think it's very racist. Yeah. I was, yeah. you know what? I knew it. That's I like blaming it. Arby's for like your saying. that's like blaming Arby's for your food poisoning just because you happen to be in the same city as an Arby's, which is a little, got it. little the Arby's. why would you have yeah. to bring up Arby's? Why do you do that? Why does everyone bring up Arby's? It's disgusting. It's weird. No, it's awesome. <laughs> Lachlan it Cross 957 Cruise FM at Edmonton at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Thanks for doing this, brother. Great to see you. If you're in Edmonton, 95.7 Cruise FM is the name of the radio station, the host of The Locker Room. Thank you, James sir. DeFiore. Thank you. You're welcome. James DeFiore, host of Blackballed, the podcast. Uh, check it out anywhere you get your fine podcasts, including Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, and blackballed.ca uh, is where the name of your website, right? Blackballmedia.ca. <laughs> well, it is a different URL than what you said. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Stan Blundell Show. <laughs> <laughs> all right boys good to see you. i'll talk to you all soon right. good to see you guys all right Take care, man. thanks fellas it was fun uh lachlan cross and james d fiore 95.7 cruise fm lachlan cross morning show radio host radio got a radio host on this program thanks to everybody for joining us thanks to ed the sock steve kersner it was great uh thanks to james for showing up today lachlan for showing up thanks to you for showing up get us wherever you get your fine podcast itunes etc spotify not itunes it's called apple Podcasts. now i gotta keep up with the times dean don't be 100 uh so check that out and you can also find uh every one of our partners at deanblundell.com as well so have a great day everybody we will talk to you soon How about that little puke that doesn't want uh, that statue to come down, though? What a turd burglar. I'm a 20-year-old Ryerson student who wants the statue of a man who committed mass genocide back because I love the statue. What I could do is come down there and build you a new Egerton Ryerson statue out of your mom's old pill bottle, so. Oh!